All right, we're live, 1105 IMBC. This is Spirit Cars. This little deal here is brought to you by spiritcars.com. So that's our intro. I'm getting getting pretty good at the intro. We think. That oh, we can that's pretty good. Working. Corporate reminded me I needed to uh, make sure spiritcars.com. Uh, we build, the core focus of our company is we build what I would say is the most complete kit on the market from 27s to a 34, 23s to a 34. We got interior packages, we got the chassis packages, we just got all the parts and pieces for you to build your car, and that's really the core of our company here. And um, if we do some other things we're, uh, outside of the hot rod industry, so really the core of our company is, uh, is fiberglass. If we're not making fiberglass happen, we ain't making it happen here. But we are blessed to the point where um, we just have lots and lots of work. And uh, so I, I think I had you title this on Building a Hot Rod for Real. Mm-hmm. Well, it would be really easy for me today to just go, man, I don't want to talk to my friends out there in, in uh, Internet land because um, we just need to get some cars done. But the reality is we're working as fast as we can to get cars done and, and continue with the core of our business, which is building fiberglass kits. We do the 34, we do the 32, we do the you know, Model A, we do the 23, the 27 fiberglass kits. A lot of people like this one right here, this is a cool car. A customer bought it from us, assembled it, brought it back, and uh, wanted us to paint it, so we painted it, put some flames on it. Um, got all the parts and pieces hanging here, but I got some parts and pieces hanging for the Black Knight. Here's a couple pieces that, you know, it just, it wasn't painted, but we got to have it painted. Larry in the Black Knight has got an aluminum drive shaft, and Larry is so cool, he gets the best parts, but instead of showing it off, he just paints it because it's even cooler, so <laughs> awesome drive shaft. So we got these parts to go back on there. Why don't you come on through here? We have to assemble, I mean, we did just assembled it, so we have to assemble this frame. Someone else will do that. And, and uh, I think today what I want to show you is Dr. I's car. Dr. I has been patient. We've been putting his car together. Um, Eddie and I, Fast Eddie, who's normally in the poultry shop, and uh, he's been busy. So he's been in the poultry shop doing his thing, but we've kind of put a, we haven't put a hold on a poultry. We had four or five tops that we just got shipped out. So... I told him right now until we get some of these turnkeys caught up, him and I are working together. So he's actually rolled his box over here in the, the temporary box. So I got Eddie and I working. We're having a good time. We're, we're assembling Dr. I's car. This has been together in a park a couple times now. So the body is coming off of it for the last time. Um, whenever you do, uh, why don't we come in and I'll just talk about some things on it. Whenever you do the T, I mean, you can assemble a chassis or you can paint it first. Just make sure all your holes are drilled for the big stuff. Um, some of it you can drill after the fact. I would recommend putting tape. I just drilled these holes here. Um, what we're going to do, we'll run the wires for the, for the headlights through the frame and come up. That way you don't see them. It's clean. Um, we fitted the, the tank, so I had to drill a hole. You can see if we're drilling tap and the bolt of the tank down. On our extended, this is an extended body versus a regular body. The shifter, I've talked all about how to measure with the bolts for here and measure it to here, use the bolts on the body to cut the whole square. Well, on the extended body, this is going to hit just a little bit on the floor. And then this, the way low car makes it, they've got this side, it's got this extended piece for a a parking brake if you wanted to use one. So this little bit of area needs to be cut out of the floor. So we put it back on the body one more time, marked it underneath with the, a marker. So now we've taken it off. Last time we'll cut that, put it on here, get it coming together. Um, details, details, details. I had a, a talk with the guys this morning. It's, you know, we, I come and do this little show and, and people watch it and um, it helps you have a little bit of confidence what the shop is and what we do. And I just reminded them this morning that there are some high expectations. And it's not just to the finished side of the product, but it's the, the foundation side, what, what goes in the beginning. Um, it's really important. 
and uh, the whole process all the way through. Yesterday, I was thinking we we were short. We've been short a couple people, but we've got some. What I think is some great hires. Our chassis shop is getting back up to the speed it needed to be, and and uh, some other areas of the company that were requiring more of my attention than I really liked. But um, we're getting the foundation of the company. I'm delivering the basic kits back to where we need to be. So anyway, the point of that is, I was welding the gas tank yesterday. This car needed a gas tank. I didn't have a gas tank. We built them in house. It had been 20 years since I built probably maybe the prototype tank for this one that I had built a gas tank. So I built the gas tank, we pressure tested it, got it all done, put it in here. But thinking about the gas tank, the only gas tanks I've built recently, I built out of cardboard. If you're going to do a, uh, a custom one-off kind of a tank, it's much easier if you build that tank out of cardboard and tape it all together and get it fitting where it goes. That way you can take the pieces apart and um, create that tank in metal then and, and then weld it. A lot of times, like a tank like this in a box, of course we, we can do it in two pieces. We'll have one piece, we break it, and we break it down, and then we'll have a bottom piece, we break it up, break it up so that sits on top of each other and you can just weld the seams on it that way. Put some, uh, some flanges on it to bolt it on have a, a bung for the uh, for the fuel line to go out we have the sending unit hole for that and then we have the filler cap so that all gets welded in so that was my project yesterday got to get it painted put it together so back to this for real we got lots of projects going on lots of folks been watching this and want to see some updates we have the blue moon there's a high expectation that car is going to be looking good and going home on the 4th of July weekend. So Larry's coming to a party at the house. We're doing a 4th of July show, so we're working on that. Um, the uh, 2XT, 2XLT, that's what we got, the 2XLT from Rodney, the orange car had been built by us years ago and he brought it back for us to do a lot of fairly significant modifications and um, we're pushing that ahead that the floor's painted, the body's gonna be painted this week and the next couple days and um, we're going to show that car. That car is going to be picked up and going home the end of the month. Uh, we've got, um, what else have we been watching? Oh, Larry, the Black Knight. We were just talk talking about the Black Knight. Larry's coming back down here pretty soon. His daughter just got married. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start showing more of that. We've got a lot of video of the Black Knight coming together. It's a pretty neat car. My son-in-law Carter's jewel chest, Chris, has got a laser engraver, etcher, all kind of deal, pretty neat. Uh, so we're doing about 30 pieces on that car. We're putting an emblem on Black Knight, uh, putting a logo with a, a knight helmet, and we're having a couple of uh, jousting knights on the front of it. I think we're going to do a video of that. That's pretty cool. When we do that, a lot of people might be interested in getting that done to their cars. What are the products we got going on? Oh man, we got a sedan that we haven't even showed yet with a flathead in it. Um, Josh has been busy. He just walked in. I'm, I'm looking at him, but you can't. You turn around quick and show him. Here he is. Look at yeah. that. He's, okay. he's got some headphones Look, on now. Look, it's Josh. They are. Do we have any questions? Yes. What method works best for bleeding brakes? What method works best for bleeding brakes is... I don't see it. But anyway, I take a bottle. And we're fixing to bleed the brakes on this. That's a good question. I take a bottle and I put a hose in it with a tube coming out. And then I'll just take on the bleeder, right here in the bleeder, open the bleeder up, put that tube onto it, and I've got a bottle full of fluid. So then I just pump it, and then you're instead of just running fluid on the ground, you're putting air and sucking it back and forth, back and forth. Remember to bleed your master cylinder before you put it. Um, bench bleed it or you can do it on the car here like that and just run it over. Um, sometimes, I mean, you just got to get the air out. You just got to get the air out. Pump, pump, do, test it. Sometimes you'll have a little more air in there, do it again. But uh, I definitely like the, uh, the method with the bottle. We also have the pump that you can go through and 
it works, but I'm just, I'm not a big fan of it. So when I bleed the brakes, that's how I do it. Are there any other questions? Any other projects? We got lots of projects. I talked to Dr. Ray yesterday. He's been real busy, so it looks like we're still going ahead with, if you've seen that video, he's doing kind of a, a Grabowski, I wouldn't call it a tribute car, but something that inspired car. That he's from uh, Hawaii and does a lot of work in uh, Los Angeles. Um, he's a designer, a garden architect designer of, of that kind of stuff now. And uh, so anyway, he wants to show that car at the, the LA's most beautiful roadster show. So we're trying to build a car that would at least be that quality. And you said you got a couple more people coming for turnkeys? Yes. Today, somebody from Tyler, Texas coming up maybe? Tomorrow. Or tomorrow I'll be here for two turnkeys for one guy and and another one that's kind of a... So it's called Friday in the middle. Friday, so that's... We're staying busy in the turnkey side, but again, the core of our business is is uh, building the parts, the pieces, the components, and helping you build your dream, rather than uh, us always assembling it. Although, cars like this, uh, we love to do it, and we love to be part of helping you accomplish, you know, the, the choices on this car, the choices on on, uh, on any of the cars are yours, they're not our choices. So really it's your car, whether we actually physically paint it or not, uh, or put it together or not. I mean, that is our goal. So, we're building hot rods for real. Building the gas tank yesterday. I don't know, did I say this or I may have thought it in my mind? No, but I will. You stop me if I'm repeating myself. I'm getting old. I had suspenders yesterday. I may start wearing some, I had some old, I had new pants that were too big. And they were falling down, so Corey, our pinstriper dude, who works in the fire department too, had some fireman suspenders. I put them on, man, now I can wear them pants again. That's awesome. So Weren't they red? They were red. They were fireman suspenders. I, it may be my new image. I'll get rid of my black hat when I go to the shows and wear my suspenders. <laughs> but when we started doing this, I'm welding the gas tank thinking, my goodness, we didn't have no tools, and I didn't have any money to buy parts. I mean, we... Started a, and I told my kids, I said, I'm going to build a car. And they just didn't believe me. They're like, no, you go to a store to buy a car. You don't build a car. That's They, they were young at the time. And, and then as we did start building the first one, it was a 23, uh, and it started looking like a car. They said, well, like, you're building a car. I said, no, we're not building a car. You can't build a car. You go to the store to buy a build a car to get a car. I said, I'm building a sign. We're just going to put this out on a pole in front of the building when we're done. So... I still haven't built my sign, we may do that pretty soon, but in the meantime, we've got a lot more tools, we got a parts room full of parts, um, these are getting easier as we build more, um, it's just, it's handy to know which bolts go where, what kind of fittings go where, have them on the shelf and, and kind of repeat and do it instead of figuring it out every time. Um, Eddie was saying this morning we were missing a couple of these, um, Eddie just put the fuel regulator on here this morning we're missing a couple of these fittings you spend 45 minutes or an hour looking for a fitting and then you have to go to O'Reilly or whatever parts store you deal with to get the right fitting that's just part of it not to be uh, frustrated over doing that but it you know in our situation we've got to be a little more efficient with having the right stuff here and, and moving it ahead at all times so there's kind of an update it's I'm just being real being real with you all today and for real, I enjoy my job. I get up, we build hot rods, a little stressed over time frames, but we really try to focus on just get it right. Don't get impatient. Don't get in a hurry if you're building your car at home. Don't get frustrated if you don't have the part. It'll be somewhere that's part of it. Find it, figure it out, make it happen. I told Stephanie yesterday, make it happen. And she I did. did. She did. You did a good job. She did. She did what I was asking her to do. She was running into some problems, and I just I didn't have time to deal with it. I walked away and said, "Just make that happen." So, we uh, are you showing my goats now on the internet? Yes. You make it happen. Okay, so you made that happen. So, uh, pass it on. I'm going to give you something to pass on today. Buddy of mine, Hot Rod Man, Ernie wrote this book. I don't know why I'm thumbing through. They're all like be random. Should I tell me when to stop. You need to hear. Yeah, yeah, do that one. Okay, here. 
here we go. And it's perfect for today, so that's why I was coming around. We needed the right one. The best way to solve a problem is not to view it as a problem. View them as challenges. Well, perfect. You know what? I said something like that this morning. The uh, superior came. They have our fiberglass and resin and all that stuff and catalysts. And he, he said, we have a problem. I said, we don't deal with problems here. We just have solutions. That's all we have here is solutions. No problems. But we didn't get catalysts today, so not a problem. We'll have a, a solution for that. So today's Wednesday. Week's half over. I've got some serious deadlines i got to get done. So we'll um, see you tomorrow at 11.05, and we'll do something maybe more interesting than today, having me ramble. Till later.